Can I place my antenna against a pole or a wall? Keep it simple, mate. Keep it real. A simple answer is just absolutely no. Don't, don't even try. But let me explain that in more detail because that, that kind of blunt answer is not going to help anyone. So I um, have a few questions here on my list that I just want to run through on this video. Does a wall matter? Well, yes, it will change your antenna and can break your performance in all directions. I've done a few simulations and I have a quick demonstration that I can show here to show also um, live on camera what, what another effect could be of the antenna. That all translates to a big problem for your, um, your performance in your system. And in this case, I'm thinking about helium mining, but I'm also thinking about 4G, UHF, 5G, Wi-Fi. The, the same logic applies on any type of antenna that may be specific to what you are trying to achieve. Um, a question, I actually addressed this in a previous video as well. Uh, how important is antenna alignment? It's very important. Uh, nothing more to add on that, but it's just very important. You need to keep the antenna upright if you want to get the right system um, performance out of it. But I have a picture to show. And then does my antenna need to be on top of a pole? It basically really relates back to a wall. So a metal pole, a metal wall, or if it's a structure you don't know quite what the properties is, or if it is just a thick structure, they're all causing problems. So you try to stay clear from any metal obstruction. Actually, now that I think about it, I saw a video yesterday of somebody saying he, um, he's not getting a lot of witnesses in his helium hotspot in Perth. And he shows a photo and the antenna is quite clear of any obstructions, but it is under the top of the roof line. So you have a roof line there and the antenna is here. So that's a massive obstruction. Plus, it's going to have other artifacts as well, which I have an extreme example here, shows you how bad it can be. Um, but before I get into that, do remember to subscribe to our channel. Um, and also, if you have any questions, let us know. Give this video a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Please contact us on rfshop.com.au here in Australia, so we could potentially help you with any of the products or just giving you advice on some of the other bits we're doing. Now. <laughs> I do apologize, I guess, but not really. This is antenna theory, um, but I just need to show you what's going on here because this is what's what's relevant to the products and the specific thing that can make or break your system better. Again, thinking hotspots, helium hotspots, thinking 4G, thinking Wi-Fi, thinking 5G, all those applications, these principles apply all the way. That's a polar plot that I show on the screen there. So polar plot for a nice typical Omni antenna such as this one is just Omni. So. When we look at the polar plot, us as the um, antenna engineers or the companies that sell these, it's just, it looks the same in all directions. So that's that classic donut and some other pictures. So basically, you look from the top, you have that view. It's the same everywhere. Easy. Um, just to show it in a more um, kind of interesting way. That's, we use a software package called CST, Computer Simulation Technologies. And um, it's um, a specific design, so I mean, we're just using a classic uh, basic antenna here. Um, that's what it looks like. You could see the antenna is, is upright in the middle, so it's just the, the point in there. So that's the point, and it's just circling in all directions. So the waves, as they get launched, they just go in all directions. If you put it against or close to a metal obstruction and your spacing is wrong, you're going to have a problem. If the spacing is correct, you may actually help yourself, but you can only help yourself in one direction. There's always going to be a change of this behavior in all directions. The extreme worst that you can get is this. And that is that polar plot that I had before, which is all around. The scale is exactly the same. That's what you're going to get. And you could see on there, the, the bottom is a small line. Actually, it shows a top view of the whole model that we created in our design software. If the spacing is wrong, if that metal plate is just like, here's my antenna, the metal plate is there, and that spacing is just just the number you don't want it to be. And it's not far away. It's just, it's um, within 30 centimeters. So if this thing is less than 30 centimeters, the, the number, um, yeah, I think it was about 17 millimeters away from a metal plate, that's what you get. I mean, that's, that's horrendous. Um, and that's what it looks like in this, this, this nice moving field. So you could see there on the pictures that that's black line that goes through it. That's basically our metal plate. And you could see that rather than going all around, there's now something going to the top, something going to the bottom, but there's not a lot going forward um, just because of the uh, cancellation of the phase. Putting the two side by side, you see the difference there. It's clearly visible that on the left, um, it's a nice circle and the other one is just completely broken. 
I mean, it could work for you, but the thing is, if you want to have something that looks everywhere and you just mount it against a, um, a balustrade or against the wall, um, that's the kind of problems you will get. That's actually all I can say about that. <laughs> the um, antenna alignment issue is also, um, you need to keep this thing upright. So you basically have an antenna that's upright. If you put it to, to its side, a little bit offset, you're going to miss some people. So the, because it's an omni antenna that looks everywhere, if you tilt this way, this is going down. Maybe that's what you wanted to do. You said, well, I want this one to point a little bit down. And remember that what goes to the other side is now going up. And in going up, you, um, you actually introduce a new problem that you hope that you perhaps didn't want to have. Um, and now my little de demonstration is on this camera. So I have this camera here, the um, GoPro on my vector network analyzer. Now this is an antenna tester. The antenna tester looks at power coming in and it sees how much is going back. If an antenna is really good, it actually absorbs everything. It doesn't absorb it, sorry, this is the wrong word. It, it sucks it all in and it sends it out. So antenna comes out at certain frequencies out of the cable into the antenna sends it everywhere. That's what we look for um, for an antenna. It needs to radiate so, because if it doesn't radiate it means the power is going to come back into the uh, machine itself. I set the machine up to go from 500 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz so we have a nice view over that um, that band for the helium minus plus all the other applications 4G and so forth. This is an awesome marine uh, antenna. It's a 4G antenna. But the thing with the uh, LoRaWAN is that works in 900 megahertz, so uh, 868 in Europe, um, 915 here in Australia and also in the US. So if you have a 4G antenna such as this one and it happens to work really awesome in the um, LoRaWAN slash Helium hotspot frequencies, you got a winner. And that's what we have here. This antenna just works really well. So first thing that you'll see uh, is Poor man's test, but it's not poor man, it's a proper machine. But you could see if the antenna is working by just putting your hand close to it. You see, I'm not touching it, I'm just moving away from it. And if I'm doing this and stuff happens on the screen there, uh, and it does happen, we know we're good. We know there's something happening. This antenna is actually responsive to environment, which means there's energy coming out and it's working quite well. I have a metal ruler here. This is just what I wanted to show. So the metal ruler, if I put that closer to my antenna, which is similar to the wall there, it's not just that my radiation pattern is going to change. So my antenna is not just going to change there, but my impedance matching, the way that it can actually radiate or not radiate also changes. So it actually becomes a problem, not just for, uh, it looks like it's not going to cover that area that well anymore. It also affects the antenna design that it actually just doesn't accept any energy. All the power goes back into your helium hotspot, which is not what you want. So it's no longer working. So that's um, just a quick demonstration that I wanted to do on that, um, that aspect as well. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, just really stay clear of obstructions when you install an antenna. Be sure that it's clear, that it's a nice open environment, that the antenna, when you put it on the roof, that it's clear, open, and on the center of a pole or something, and it, mo it clears the whole area that you want. Of course, it's different when you have a directional antenna, because when you have a, a directional antenna, you argue, so then you just look at what's going forward, and then that, that's, that's no longer an issue. Um, and that's the clear difference between one system and the other one. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you in the next video soon. Cheers, bye-bye.